Okay. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss about the design philosophy of the steel members and in this course as we have told that we will be designing the members with the limit state method. So, the design philosophy of limit state design will be discussed in today's lecture. Now, uh, different type of design philosophy has been uh, followed uh, in the decades means last few decades and uh, if we see the design philosophy uh, we can see that uh, different type of design methodologies uh, was used earlier one is called working stress method this working stress method uh, was used till 2007 uh, 2007 uh, in our country we have means we were using till 2007 the working stress method design philosophy uh, another design philosophy we um, come across the globe that is ultimate strength method ultimate strength method and uh, again another design philosophy which uh, we will be considering in our course is the limit state design method limit state method and limit state means basically limit state of strength and limit state of serviceability so why we are not going for working stress method or ultimate strength method why uh, we are going for this that also will be discussed in today's lecture little bit and um, what are the philosophy of different methodology that very briefly I will discuss in next few slides. First let us discuss about the working stress method. As I told that working stress method was used till 2007 in our country and IS uh, 800 1984 was the code uh, through which we used to design in working stress method basically the stress uh, whatever uh, stress we consider permissible stress uh, or uh, permissible stress that we divide with some factor of safety to get the allowable stress. Uh, so, if we see in case of working stress method what we do that if we see the um, stress strain diagram uh, in case of steel it varies like this. So, up to limit of profession means up to ill strength means if this is F y. So, we consider the structure to uh, withstand load up to F y that means the characteristic strength of the uh, member that means the ill strength. So, up to ill strength we consider and then uh, we make some factor uh, of safety and then we get the permissible stress. If you see here uh, I have written that permissible stress is we should be less than ill stress by some factor of safety. So, here we assume the material to behave in linear elastic manner and uh, uh, stress strain diagram means stress strain behavior is also consider linear that means we are not considering beyond the ill stress though the member can take certain load after reaching the ill stress. So, that we are not going to consider here and the factor of safety in different case uh, has been reported here this is given details you can find out in IS 800 1984 the earlier code where the axial tension sigma at was considered as 0.6 fy the permissible stress that means here factor of safety was 1.67. Similarly, for compression also 0.6 f y and factor of safety was 1.67, but in case of bending we consider 0.66 in bending tension and bending compression and for shear stress it was 0.4 factor of safety we have taken 2.5. So, this is how the working stress method was used earlier, but in this case there are certain Mm, disadvantages or certain drawbacks were there like here we do not consider the load factor that means the load whatever we are considering the service load we design on the basis of that service load. But uh, from the probabilistic method we have understood that load whatever we are considering uh, sometimes it may uh, exceed that load. So, in that case the structure may go going to fail. So, to take care we cannot rely on this working stress method 
always. This is one thing. Another thing is that sometimes this working stress method become very conservative because we are taking up to the linear behavior of the stress strain diagram. That means we are considering up to the yield stress. Though after yield stress, uh, the member can take certain amount of load with certain deformation. So, that part the nonlinear part the inelastic part we are not going to consider which is not correct. So, if we consider that then our uh, design the construction cost or the design member will become less mem member size will become less and it will be economic. And also we have to understand that uh, the structure we means member will design in such a way that it should not be conservative means it should be economic and of course, 100 percent safety has to be considered we will not compromise with any safety, but at the same time we will try to make it economize. So, that is possible uh, if we go limited method why I am com coming later. Then another method uh, we, which you con which we consider earlier was ultimate strength method ultimate strength method. It is basically a plastic design method. In this case, the limit state is attained by the members with plastic moment. That means, it in this case, we go up to say F u up to this we go right. So, up to this we consider and then we design and of course, we also multiply some load factor, we multiply some load factor with the working load to get the ultimate load. So, ultimate load uh, uh, can be found by uh, multiplying a load factor with a working load. So, this is done, but in this case problem is that uh, serviceability um, condition we are not going to consider. That means, whether the occupant feel discomfort or not. Uh, whether uh, excessive deflection is coming or not that we do not bother. So, from the um, user's point of view it is not uh, it is not advisable. So, uh, this method also became nowadays obsolete. Nowadays what method we provide is the limited method. In this limited method the structure is designed in such a way that it can safely withstand all kind of loads that may act under consideration in its entire design life. So, that we have to consider means we have to remember and the science of reliability based design was developed with the objective of providing a rational solution to the problem of adequate safety. That means, we are not compromising with the safety and uncertainty is reflected in loading and material strength. So, what we do here we consider the up to ultimate strength and we make use of some factor of safety to get the permissible uh, strength of the member. So, there we are giving uh, I mean some sort of factor of safety to ensure the uncertainty factor. Also, we are giving the load factor means from load point of view uh, we are uh, means we are not sure that what will be the uh, actual load in the site at the time. So, what are the load is coming we try to find out the maximum means worst possible combination and we multiply with some factor which was obtained from reliability based method and then we try to design with that factor load. This is limit state method, but this is limit state of uh, strength another is limit state of serviceability that also we have to consider that I am coming. So, limit state of strength we can think that uh, factors governing the ultimate strength. So, one is limit state of strength and another is limit state of serviceability these two point we have to consider limit state method means limit state of strength and limit state of serviceability. So, uh, in case of limit state of strength we have to consider the stability which stability against overturning and so stability that we have to keep in mind. Also, we have to keep in mind the fatigue and plastic collapse. So, limit state of strength depends on these few aspects. 
So, in IS 2007, IS 800-2007, the limited uh, state of strength includes these few things which we have to keep in mind like loss of equilibrium of the structure as a whole or in part, loss of stability of the structure, then failure due to excess deformation or rupture, fracture due to fatigue and brittle fracture. So, these are associated with the failure which we have to keep in mind and we have to design under the worst possible combination. Another thing as I told that one is limit state of strength, another is limit state of serviceability. So, uh, limit state of serviceability when we consider we check deflection limit, then vibration limit, durability consideration and also fire resistance. So, these are few aspects uh, from limit state of serviceability point of view. So, we have to uh, take care, we have to keep in mind this limit and we have to design the uh, structural member keeping all these limits in our mind. So, limit state of serviceability will be associated with the discomfort faced by the user while using the structure that is one is excess deflection or deformation of the structure because suppose a structure we are residing in a tall building uh, 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 towards the top floor. then. Uh, due to vibration means due to uh, cyclone or due to earthquake, the building may vibrate considerably. But we know that the, uh, from limit state of strength, we know that design has been done in such a way it will not collapse. But if we do not consider the limit state of serviceability, then uh, we are allowing deflection at large. So, if deflection is more, then the occupant will be afraid of staying there because of this large vibration. So, in such case, uh, we have to consider the occupant's discompatibility and we have to take certain measures so that vibration can be reduced, excessive deflection or deformation of the structure can be reduced. So, this has to be taken care. Then, excessive vibration of the structure causing discomfort to the commuters, repairable damage or crack generated due to fatigue, that also we have to keep in mind that uh, we should take care of the damage or crack and of course, corrosion and durability that also we have to keep in mind. So, these are the some, um, uh, some parameters which are associated with the uh, limit state of serviceability. Now, coming to partial safety factor. So, in case of limit state of strength, we know that certain safety factor are going to be considered one is safety factor for load. This is given in clause 5.3.3 table 4 of IS 800 2007. In table 4, we will get details which I am going to show in next slide, uh, where the formula is given that Q d is equal to summation of gamma f k into Q c k, where Q c is the characteristic load or load effect and Q d is the design load or load effect and gamma f is the partial safety factor for kth load or load effect. So, this gamma f is going to vary from time to time depending on the type of loading gamma f value will be going to be changed right. So, Q d we can find out that is the design load as gamma f into Q c. So, in table 4 of IS 800 2007, these partial safety factors are given. Now, if you look into this table 7, table 4, we will see the different combinations are given like dead load, live load, crane load, dead load, live load, crane load plus wind load or earthquake load, dead load plus wind load or earthquake load, dead load plus ejection load, like this, a uh, different type of uh, load combinations are there. Next is what will be the uh, partial safety factor? Suppose, if we have dead load, live load and crane load combination, what we can do? For dead load, we can multiply 1.5 and for live load also we can find, find out, uh, we can multiply 1.5. So, this will become like this 
one load combination will be 1.5 into dead load plus live load. This is one load combination we can make. Another load combination we can make that is that dead load plus live load plus wheel load or earthquake load. There we are making multiplication over 1.2. So, there we can make like this 1.2 into dead load plus live load plus wheel load or earthquake load either wind load or earthquake load we are providing. So, this is one sort of load combination. Another load combination is say 1.5 times dead load plus wind load or earthquake load. So, this is different type of load combinations are reported in the code uh, which we have to consider and we have to find out the worst combination. That means, which one will be worst and we have to design the member from that worst combination. And also we can see that limit state of serviceability under dead load and live load we can multiply just unity 1. But when we are going to consider uh, limit state of serviceability under dead load, live load and wind load or earthquake load we will multiply uh, 0.8 and 0.8. That means, for that serviceability load condition we can consider that dead load plus 0 0.8 live load plus 0 0.8 earthquake load or wind load here it is 1.0. So, this is one combination against which we have to check the deflection that means, the limit state of serviceability we have to check the limit state of serviceability by using this type of load combination. So, several load combinations will come into picture one is due to uh, load will be considered due to uh, strength point of view we have to consider another is due to uh, serviceability point of view we have to consider. So, for each case we will consider and we will see whether it is exceeding the limiting value or not. Limiting value may be stress, stress limiting value may be deflection and when we are going to check the deflection criteria we will multiply either 1 or 0.8 as per the uh, coral provisions given and in case of um, uh, strength calculation we will multiply either 1.5 or 1.2 as per the type of loading. Right. Now, partial safety factor for material as we told that material we behave up to ultimate strength means we will consider up to ultimate strength. So, the partial safety factor we can consider as S d as S u by gamma m where S u is the ultimate strength of the material and S d is the design strength of the material. So, that we use and gamma m is the partial safety factor for material as given in table 5. In table 5 it is given. So, uh, if we see the table 5 we can see the different partial safety factor has been considered for different type of material condition like in case of yielding resistance governed by yielding. So, gamma m 0 is one safety factor which is considered as 1.10 whereas, resistance of member to buckling that also as 1.10 that also gamma m 0 and resistance governed by ultimate stress that we are making 1.25 partial safety factor. That means, we are dividing the partial safety factor with the ultimate strength to get the design strength. And for connection uh, for bolt friction type bolt gamma m f we use 1.25 for soft fabrication also 1.25 for field fabrication. Whereas, for bearing type also this is 1.25 1.25 in case of rivet also we provide 1.25 and in case of weld we provide in soft fabrication 1.25 and for field fabrication we increase the factor of safety up to 1.5. So, this is how the factor of safety has been decided and reported in the code which we have to consider and we have to divide with this factor of safety with the ultimate strength of the material to get the design strength of the material. Another is the serviceability criteria. For serviceability criteria if you see the deflection limits has been defined that is defined in table 6 in 
table 6 of IS 800 2007 different uh, limits have been provided. Say for in case of industrial building, I am just showing few of them. Uh, one is vertical deflection, another is lateral deflection. Again, design load will be due to live load, wind load due to live load only. So, different type of design load will be considered and members also different type of members are, uh, have different limiting condition. Limiting condition means that span by 150 sometimes, sometimes span by 180, sometimes span by 240, span by 300 like this. So, for different type of supporting condition and different type of members, the limiting deflection of the members will be uh, has been given in the table 6 uh, due to different type of load and deflection means this is horizontal deflection as well as vertical deflection. So, limiting condition has been defined in the code which we have to maintain. That means, when we will be going to design a particular member, we have to see under which load we are going to design and whether we are checking for vertical deflection or horizontal deflection, what is the type of fixity or support condition, then uh, what are the type of member, what is the member. Depending on that, we can find out the uh, maximum deflection limit and which we have to follow. So, this is a continuation of the table 6 for other buildings, one was industrial building and another was other buildings we have given. Now, another thing is the cross sectional classification. This is given in clause 3.7 of table 2. The cross section classification has been made one is class 1 which is plastic, class 2 classification is compact and class 3 is semi compact. We know in IS code different type of steel roll sections are given. So, say for I section we have IS MB, we have IS JB, we have IS LB, IS HB, IS WB like this we have different type of I sections. Now, for different type of I sections this d the depth of the wave and t w d by t w ratio is different. Similarly, this flange width and flange thickness this is different. So, its ratio is also different b by t f d by t w. So, we have to see what is the ratio and this different type of structures has been classified according to the cross section as plastic compact or semi compact. So, for a particular type of member we have to decide mean particular type of cross section we have to decide means we have to see whether this cross section is under plastic semi compact or compact and accordingly design criteria will be followed. So, those things we have to keep in mind. then coming to load and load combination. Load is um, important because uh, under the particular load we have to design the member and that load may be due to dead load means self weight, may be due to live load, may be wind load or seismic load or may be other type of load like accidental load or snow load, hydrostatic load, uh, different type of loads are there. So, then uh, we have to know uh, what are the cordial provisions, how to uh, calculate the load on a particular member, what will be the amount of or quantity of load will come to that particular member that we have to know. Then we have to go for the load combination with certain factor of safety that we have seen. So, here if we see uh, the different type of loads are given IS 875 in part 1 to part 5, IS 875 part 1 to part 5 various load and load combinations have been given. And now, in part 1 the dead loads of the structures have been given like for different type of material for different type of member what will be the mass density of that 
like for brick, for plaster, for concrete, uh, what will be the mass density, uh, which will be calculated for cell power of the structure that has been given in details in IS 875 part 1. So, the dead load calculation or the cell point of the structure if we want to calculate then we have to go through the um, IS 875 part 1 and then we have to see uh, whether the means what is the dead load or cell point coming into the structure that we have to consider. Next is the live load or imposed load. Live load or imposed load will be I mean is given in IS 875 part 2 in part 2 different type of live loads uh, are given like in case of residential building what will be the live load, in case of industrial building what will be the live load, in case of um, office building what will be the live load that has been specified. Again in case of residential building in balcony, in kitchen, in bedroom what will be the live load, uh, the different live loads uh, are specified. So, that has to be uh, taken care from that code. Another is the crane load, crane load also can be found from this part 2. Then coming to wind load, wind load is given in part 3, IS 875 part 3. So, wind load I will be coming uh, details after this slide. Then snow load in the area where snow is a factor, there we have to consider the snow load and that has been given in part 4. right? And in part 5, the temperature load, hydrostatic load, soil pressure, fatigue, accidental impact, explosions etcetera and different type of load combinations are given in part 5. So, part 5 uh, consists of temperature load, hydrostatic load, soil pressure, fatigue, accidental load, impact, explosion etcetera and different type of load combination means dead load plus live load, dead load plus wind load dead load plus live load plus wind load like these different load combinations are recommended in part 5. And earthquake load you can find out in IS 1893-2002. In case of earthquake load we know uh, in our country we have 5 zone, now it is zone means 4 number zone, zone 1 and zone 2 is club to zone 2. So, zone 2, zone 3, zone 4 and zone 5 and zone 5 is the most seismically active zone. So, for different zone what is the um, seismic coefficient uh, for calculating the load that has been given in the code in IS 1893-2002. So, detail calculation of um, load due to earthquake uh, can be found in this code and according to that we have to calculate the load coming to the particular structure and then we have to apply that, that load to the structure to find out the structure to make the structural design properly. Then erection load, erection load is given in IS 800-2007 in clause 3.3 .3, the details are there and also other secondary effects such as temperature change, differential uh, settlement, eccentric connections those things also has to be taken care in the load and load commission because uh, due to settlement, differential settlement extra load will come into picture due to temperature extra load will come into picture. So, that has to be also taken care uh, in the design calculation. Now, in clause 5.3.1 if we see the, uh, the structure system has been classified in three groups. Uh, one is the permanent action permanent action means the um, load which are permanent in nature, these are basically cell point of the structure and uh, which uh, we call generally dead load. So, these are permanent action. Another is variable action, variable action means basically imposed load and wind or earthquake load are uh, not permanent, these are temporary and variable. So, these are under variable actions. Another is accidental actions action due to accidental load like explosion or due to sudden impact uh, such type of accidental actions happen. So, that has to also be taken care. And we have told that while designing the steel structure following load combinations have to be considered 
with partial safety factor. Partial safety factor I have already discussed that is dead load plus imposed load. Here we will multiply with 1.5 and dead load plus imposed load plus wind or seismic load that is 1.2 we will multiply dead load plus wind load here also we multiply 1.5 like this dead load plus erection load. So, uh, these are certain um, some load combinations which we have to take taken into consideration for the design of the member. Now, very briefly I will go through the wind load calculation because in case of steel structure wind load is a factor for designing the steel members wind because the steel structures are light in weight. So, uh, it is vulnerable to cyclone and wind therefore, we need to know what are the uh, wind load coming into the steel structure and accordingly we have to find out the um, design criteria means we have to find out the load uh, coming on the on a particular member and then uh, accordingly we have to design not only we will design we will check the limiting deflection because serviceability criteria has to be also maintained. So, what is the deflection coming due to wind because uh, steel are ductile in nature. So, lot of deflection will com come in comparison to uh, concrete structure therefore, we have to check the serviceability criteria as well right. So, uh, thinking that uh, I am going to give a brief uh, review on the wind calculation and I told that wind calculation was given means is given in the code IS 875 part 3. In part 3 you will get the detail of wind calculation and here the design wind speed V z are calculated from this formula that is V z is equal to k 1 k 2 k 3 into V b k 1 k 2 k 3 into V b where V b is the basic wind speed and this basic wind speed are divided in divided in our country in 6 zone. Okay. In 6 different zone uh, it has been uh, given like in zone 1 the basic wind speed is 55 per 55 meter per second this is the highest speed. Then in zone 2 it is 50 zone 3 it is 47, zone 4 44, zone 5 39 and zone 6 is 33 meter per second. So, according to this uh, IS code um, uh, in the figure, figure 1 of the IS code, uh, IS code means IS 875 in figure 1 the basic wind speed for different zone has been given. Also at the end of the IS code in a tabular form it is given for different city what will be the basic wind speed for different city like Kolkata, Delhi, Madras, means Chennai, Mumbai, Bangalore in different city you will get the uh, what is the basic wind speed of that city that also we can find out from the code. Next is the probability factor k 1, k 2, k 3 k 1 is the probability factor or description this is given in table 1 I am not going into details if you look through the uh, code you will be able to understand. Uh, all the details have been given. Then K2, K2 depends on the terrain, height and structure size. So, that factor is given as K2 and in table 2 that is given. Uh, you will see that according to height the um, uh, K2 factor is going to increase like this it is going to increase. That means, the wind speed will go on increasing with the increase of height. So, K2 takes care that that effect right. Another is K 3, K 3 is the topography factor means uh, what type of uh, topography is it in the uh, where the structure is going to be constructed whether it is valley or anything else or plain land uh, depending on that what is the slope depending on that the K 3 factor will be calculated. These details you can find out in clause 5.3.3. Now, wind pressure, wind pressure we can find out from this formula P z is equal to uh, 0.6 V z square uh, actually 1200 kg per meter cube is the mass density of the air. So, if we um, use that formula then we have rho V square. So, P z we can find out 0.6 V z square 
and this wing pressure at any height of structure depending depends on this type of uh, criteria like wind pressure depends on velocity and density of the aircraft because uh, density uh, we consider uh, 1 to 0 0, but depending on the density also this wind pressure varies and of course, with the velocity velocity V B will be different at different zone at different city. So, according to that V z will be changed. So, that also uh, we have to um, consider then height above ground level the building or the structure is situated at what height above the ground level that also uh, have to be keep in mind for which the wind pressure depends. Then shape and aspect ratio of the building uh, uh, suppose if building is circular then the wind pressure will not be much, but if building is like this then wind pressure will be uh, much means wind pressure will develop in this area will be much. So, depends on the shape and aspect ratio of the building also topography of the surrounding ground surface, angle of wind attack whether it is uh, with this angle or this angle or 90 degree angle that depends on that the wind pressure will depend. Also solidity ratio or openings in the structure means on the structure uh, whether if we have open openings or not depending on that also the wind pressure will be governed. So, depending on the solidity ratio the wind pressure can be calculated. So, these are some um, factors which are uh, which depends on the calculation of the pressure. Then design wind force once we get the design wind pressure we can find out the wind force that is F is equal to C F into A E into P Z. P Z is the design wind pressure at different height we can find out the wind pressure different way and A E is the effective frontal area effective frontal area means if we have a building like this and if we have uh, wind from this direction then the area will be area will be in this direction means area will be uh, this height into the width of that direction. Then P z is the design wind pressure and this P z will vary uh, with the height. So, uh, at floor to floor or at a different height we have to calculate the wind pressure and then we have to find out the force on that particular floor or particular height and C f is the force coefficient of the building. So, this is how we can find out the total wind load of a building as a whole and after getting wind load we can divide into different floor right. Another thing is we have to consider that wind force on roof and walls as an individual uh, means if, uh, if there is a roof suppose we have a building like this and it has a roof. So, there we can find out what is the wind pressure is coming from externally and what is the internal wind pressure is coming depending on that we have to find out the force and this force can be calculated from this formula that is C P E minus C P I into A into P Z. This is given in clause 6.2.1 where C P E is the external pressure how to calculate this is given in clause 6.2.2 and C P I is the internal pressure coefficient C P E and C P I. So, internal pressure coefficient also uh, can be calculated from clause 6.2.3 and A is the surface area of the structural element. So, if we can find out this value the coefficient uh, external pressure coefficient and internal pressure coefficient and the surface area then we can find out the wind force on roof or wall as an individual right. So, this is how we can calculate the wind force. So, this is all about today's lecture and we have seen in today's lecture that why limit state method is important and why, why it is more accurate more practical uh, compared to other two method that is ultimate strength method and working stress method why uh, we have moved to limit state method that is understandable now and uh, tomorrow onwards uh, when we will be going for design of members or connections uh, individual members or connections we will follow this criteria that means limit state method design criteria where the load factor and the partial safety factor for the material 
will be considered and what will be the load combination for which we have to design that will be considered and uh, we have seen the what is the ultimate strength of the member, what is the yield strength of the member for the steel that uh, according to the different grade we can find out and we can use make use of those uh, parameters for design of the uh, elemental means element or member. Okay. So, with this I like to conclude today's lecture. Thank you.